Got some dumpster dive action for you. Today's target is going to be scrap metal. Look at that nice aluminum door. It's got the brass kick plate. It's got the brass handles. Those are easy to take off, so I'll take those off before I take it to the scrapyard. Um, that's actually kind of looking like fake brass there, but uh, got some stuff here. Got like a fire, uh, fire sprinkler, steel bar, portable heater, got an old crock pot, lead battery in there, got some aluminum. Got some old speakers, three amp for motorcycles and scooters. <laughs> um, I don't think that's gonna work. Okay, so I'm gonna go target and scrap metal today. This is Sunday, so. so today we're looking for cold hard cash, folks. I've seen some comments, people wanting me to go after uh, university school stuff. Problem is it's been wet and rainy here and uh, mainly I'll be looking for textbooks. And textbooks and rain don't go too well, but uh, the way I do the university deal is, like you might see on YouTube, you might see people, uh, like the day the students move out, right? They'll go hound them and, and uh, get all the stuff they throw out and don't take with them. But for me, I, I don't do the on-campus stuff. They uh, kind of cut that. They told people not to do that a long time ago, so I haven't been down there in a long time. But I do the off-campus stuff, like the off-campus apartments, and that, that should be pretty good uh, to the end of May. <clears throat> Basically all through summer. Last part of May is usually pretty good. Oh boy. <laughs> I was talking about textbooks. This is a high school. I don't know, I think this is a junior high school. Those pre-algebra books might be worth some money and they're dry too, I think. Let's see. Uh, nah, see, that's what I was talking about. Look at that, they got, see that? Just a little bit of rain, man. Look at that, see that? You got the ruffle, that's, that's ruined, man. That's, that takes the value down so far. If they were super expensive books, like a hundred dollars, you know, I could probably dry them out and get 20 or 30 bucks for them maybe. Dang, look at this. I, I was heading that way. I, this is the first time I've seen these big open tops sitting here. I think they tore down part of the school. Look at this, oh, look at, oh no. Oh, I almost wish I didn't even stop now. Brand new cases of algebra books these would have been worth decent money too um just ruined they're all they're all wet man look at that it wasn't a very heavy rain but that's why i didn't want to go look for college textbooks until they empty the trash and the sun comes out because uh, it's basically just useless because of this this is kind of interesting <laughs> Go figure, huh? Look at this nice. Look at that. Even uh, just uh, water damaged, man. Uh. <laughs> cases and cases and cases. Oh. Oh, dang, man. There, there was. Uh. Even though they're junior high school books, I think algebra is probably high school as well, but. Uh, well, you know what? I could be wrong. This is a junior high. That's actually a high school there. But it's on the other side of the fence. So I think this is junior high. I think they tore down a building. Ah, dang it. <laughs> Seeing those cases of algebra books and stuff. Just got rained on. It just makes me wanna. Makes me wanna go. <laughs> Who knows what I could dig out of there? Maybe a couple thousand dollars worth, you know, of inventory. Who knows for sure? But uh, little coax in there. 
Let's see if there's any brass on that sink. <sighs> Shoot. Well, I'm kind of glad I ran into that just because of what, how I started to intro the video. But at the same time, it's just, I uh, almost wish I didn't see that. <laughs> Dang it. Maybe I'll just take that whole waste can, we think. I can always throw it away later. Ironing spray pro grade. I don't do a lot of ironing. I guess I'll take my goofy little consolation prizes and be on my way. Sometimes at construction sites like this, I used to uh, take like a stick and put a big magnet on the end. And when it was clear, when it was obvious they were done doing what they're doing, because they'll they'll scrap the big metal. And I'd go along and take all this stuff like this. You'd be surprised, man, how these little pieces of steel they add up so fast. I ain't no bucket. Of, five gallon bucket of these is you know basically you can't even lift it but let's see all that look at that <laughs> keep that in mind folks if you're when it's obvious they've abandoned it you know that stuff can add up in a hurry tell you what I filled up that bucket, it'd probably be like 200 pounds or something stupid. Well, today might be aluminum door day. I'll come back and snatch that up on the way back home. Get a little hot wheel in the mud right there. <laughs> is that called magpie eye? What is it? <laughs> what is it? I must have it. It's kind of shiny. Oh. <sighs> oh, it's the Batmobile. Look at that. See the front? No, 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 no. Scrap metal.
Well, some copper's better than no copper, I'll tell you what. For perspective, if every dumpster I looked in had that amount in it, I would be a millionaire. Hands down, multi-millionaire. Every dumpster just had that right there. Black stuff is good. Good heavy. Good heavy copper. It's heavy duty stuff. So if you watch my videos, this is a solar panel installer. They use the real deal, folks. It doesn't get any better than that right there. As far as copper. Okay, for those of you that haven't seen the scavenger two-step or you don't have it down yet, I know how marvelous it is, but here it is. Now watch closely, it's the scavenger two-step. Well, I don't know if I had the camera on it. Something like that right there. <laughs> Rather light for a Sunday, I suppose. Though, uh, actually, I know for sure the solar panel companies really get slowed down when it rains.
Nice little bits in there today. That's a nice chunk of electrical uh, copper. Right there. That's number one right there. Lottie daddy. I could mess with those oil filters, but I'm sure a lot of you know. For those of you that don't know, you can set those things upside down to drain. It will look like they're empty and then I'll throw them in my tote and an hour later I'll have oil over everything tote full of oil so <sighs> but they're heavy though if your scrapyard accepts them uh, if you're interested oil change shops sometimes Sometimes they'll even have a crusher where they crush those oil filters. And you can find a dumpster full of those. And uh, just like this steel, they add up in a hurry. I am finding scrap metal. That's good. Could have been a Tasmanian devil crate. What do you think? 
I kind of like to have that. That's wet though. It's sitting in some scuzz. Oh. That reminds me of uh, what was the name of that show? The Crypt Keeper or whatever. Uh, this was under the stairs. I had a monster in it. What is that thing? Oh. It's actually like a storage chest. Ah, a homemade dealy dealy. It's kind of neat. Kind of neat, kind of neat, kind of weighs about 300, 400 pounds, too. That's heavy, dude. Man, there must be something. Something in it. Okay, this is the reason I stopped right down here. Big brass chunks. You probably can't see them yet. Let me get to them. I think that's gonna be an aluminum aluminum hose. Hopefully it's not stainless steel. It might, might just be rubber. But uh, that's why I went home to get these. The lopper choppers. Those of you new, if it's stainless steel, I can't really use this tool or I'll ruin it. But if it's aluminum or just plastic, then uh, this should be really good. Let's see. Uh, well, we are in luck, folks. I'll tell you what, that's not a fun hose to go through. Alright, I'm going to wrestle off one, two, three, four, I think five more of those. That's nice stuff, I tell you what. That's just gonna be dirty brass, I think. It's all right though. What was dirty brass? Like 85 cents or so? That's gonna be three, three or four times six, 18. It's gonna be about 20 pounds. That's gonna be eight, 60, 16. It's gonna be a little over $17. Seven or eight. I have eight of those. So eight, 16, 24. It's gonna be about 25 pounds or so. So eight, 16, 24, minus four, about 20. Probably gonna claim about $22 or so. My loppers were loose. Let's have a look at that again, folks. Let's see, folks. Let's see if the loppers can go through the garden hose. I've never actually tried it. Loppers, these are cable, cable cutters. They're for uh, aluminum and copper cables. Utility cable cutters is the name of them. They're designed for aluminum and copper, for those who don't know. So uh, that's why I was saying for stainless steel, I couldn't use them. I mean, I could use them, but I would basically trash the blades. 
copper and aluminum no problem and uh, let's see what it does to a garden hose let's see oh <laughs> that's just wonderful oh boy i didn't know it worked that good um shoot i actually touched the brass there i'll get it on that last one both of them um wow you know what i had i wonder i wonder how long those have been loose because this is a wonderful tool and lately on videos i've shown using this on copper tubing and it wasn't going through it like it used to so i bet that's been loose that's <laughs> <laughs> They're an impressive tool, man. I'll tell you what, if you got copper to chop, get you some utility cable cutters. I got those off eBay for 35. And brand new, a pair like this, probably over 100. Nice, long, strong pair. I'm not sure what the name is, but uh, that's a great tool to have if you come across lots of copper insulated cable. I mean, chopping it anyway you know even cleaning even uh stripping insulated copper wire a tool like that cut it into short chunks if you had to lots of times that good wire will be all knotted up and you gotta straighten it and it's lame utility cable cutters google them check them out i'll put a link down there in the description to some on ebay that's where I got my used ones on eBay. Check them out down there. They're worth having. That's a big water heater. Look how wide that thing is. Jeez. Classic series professional. It's a nice water heater, isn't it? Looks like it's got an extra pump on there doing something. Huh. I need to put that pipe wrench in here, don't I? I need to put the pipe wrench in there. I don't think I can get that off there with channel locks. Oh shoot, my channel locks aren't in there neither. I got those somewhere else. Okay, let's see. It's actually got a copper look to it. See that? Look at that. I think that's actually copper. Or a, a red brass. That's probably more of a red brass type material. A bit.
just in case there's pressure in there. <laughs> there shouldn't be any pressure, but uh, careful, careful taking stuff off like that. If you missed my videos about propane tanks and oxygen bottles, right down there in the description, oxygen tanks. People taking those off and they explode in their face, so be careful. Be very, very careful. Look how hot that one got. It got so hot it melted that plastic off. That one I showed earlier, look at that. I think that's, I think that's why it's on there so tight. I think the Teflon tape has melted, made it extra strong. I don't think I'm gonna get this one. I might be able just to break it off if I work on it long enough get before I get kicked out of here. Should probably get out of here before, before I get told to leave.
Time to go. Time to go. Any tin hounds want these two water heaters are at the same apartment complex. It's Elmwood Grove. That's Sunset and Springdale up there. About two blocks south of Sunset and Springdale. This is South 40th Street. Calling all tin hounds. You give the tin hound call. I should get their attention. <laughs> It's worth 12 cents, folks. It's worth 12 cents. One of these days I'll get a vehicle that costs 10 to $12,000 a year to own and make YouTube videos about picking up $11,000 of scrap metal a year and tell you I'm doing something great. So. <laughs>
I should probably find where that water flows. There could be hundreds of golf balls. So it's actually plexiglass. So I don't have to deal with broken glass. So that's good. What is this over here? Party. No, play foam. Hmm. Play foam balls. Anybody need any play foam? <laughs> Let's see if that's fake brass. Fake brass. This aluminum painted yellow. Real brass on the doorknobs. On a boulder in the highway <laughs> looks like it's had a few tires hit it if I'm not mistaken
Ooh, how'd you like to have that kicked up and hit you in the forehead? Okay then. Okay, so I didn't test it to see if that was fake brass. I was too busy yapping, didn't I? On that first door. Oh yeah. I can just tell by looking at it. That's, that's aluminum also on that. Okay, so uh, people like to hear the prices. So let's get a ballpark. I'm take the brass off there. I'm gonna say thirty dollars in brass. I'm gonna say two or three pounds of copper. Let's just be conservative. Say two pounds of copper. Three. So uh, that'd be about seven. Let's say seven dollars copper. Thirty. Thirty dollars brass. Thirty-seven. I can probably just for these doors as is. I think I can get a dirty extruded up here at the scrapyard, so it'll be like 40 cents a pound, give or take. It's 10, 20. Uh, let's say 10 is four dollars. Eight. I'm gonna say ten dollars aluminum. That's 47 dollars. I got insulated copper wires for probably another six or seven. Uh, be 50 let's say 54 and I'm probably pounding number one insulated copper wire uh, maybe a little more let's just go 56 10 shreds more aluminum 60 that's a nice piece of scrap that white canopy steel frame and uh, Uh, I'll just say sixty dollars, folks. Sixty dollars, and that's just uh, like two or three, about two or three hours. About, let's go conservative, under three hours, under three hours, sixty dollars cash. Got to take it to the scrapyard tomorrow. I don't really have to do any more work to any of it. It's just uh, that's as is, and uh, so my overhead for that vehicle is gonna be about a dollar twenty about a dollar thirty now that gas has went up a dollar thirty a day is my average whether i work or not it's about four hundred and fifty dollars a year for everything my overhead today is a dollar thirty sixty minus a dollar thirty is fifty eight dollars and seven cents cold cash profit that's everything that's all my overhead <laughs> So if I was driving it, this, this is just for pre, uh, frame of reference. This is what I do. Those are super dangerous. Probably the most dangerous thing you could do is drive a small two-wheel vehicle or a three-wheel vehicle, a small vehicle where you're open. It's probably the most dangerous thing you could do to drive on public streets on a vehicle like that. So I would say don't do it. But just for uh, reference, people get confused what they're looking at sometimes on YouTube. This fifty-eight dollars seventy cents cold cash profit under three hours for me. So uh, if I was driving a vehicle, we had to pay, you know, two grand insurance a year. What is it, what's gas now? Four fifty a gallon. Uh, just ballpark everything. If you were using it as a any as a work vehicle in any sense, you're probably talking about twenty-five dollars a day, thirty dollars a day give or take these days this is rough rough estimate let's just go 20 split the difference let's just go 27 dollars and uh so out of 60 it'd be a 33 i'd have about 33 dollars profit and it would have taken me at least twice as long if not three or four times longer to go run that route i just ran so uh, 33 this is uh, just to uh, for re frame of reference right I'm not saying anything about anything or anything 
I'm just frame of reference to what I'm doing here. Uh, $33 over say six. Let's just go six hours. What I'm, what I specifically am doing is scavenging. Right. I start with zero every day. This isn't from any, you know, shops or no connections. Right. This is straight scavenging. 33 divided by five would be 660. About five dollars. <laughs> About five dollars an hour is what I would make. If I just did what I just did, what you just watched, if I did it in a bigger vehicle, I'd have made about five dollars an hour today. Coming back and putting air in my tar and all that jazz. About twenty about twenty-five dollars an hour is what I averaged today. Compared to uh I'd make about five dollars an hour. This is just scrap metal. This is just scrap scrap metal numbers. All right, this isn't counting if I, like if I had all, found all those textbooks, you know, that was thousands of dollars. This is just what you're seeing here, just this scrap metal. So, uh, 25 compared to five, that's, see, the way I'm doing it, I, I'm five times better than driving a vehicle, whether it's a truck or a car, all right? But uh, that's just for this, what, specifically what I just did. That's why I do it like this, and, uh, just, uh, I know lots of new people, oh, it's, it's constantly, I see, you see something you don't, you're not used to, you see something you're not, you don't understand, you might think it's stupid, but that's the numbers, they don't lie, numbers don't lie, folks, uh, but, you know, of course, I'd take multiple trips when I, to get all those textbooks if I want, if they were dry, right, so, of course, then, a bigger vehicle, of course, at that specific time would be better but you know this is the sure way right? <laughs> it's not necessarily the fast way or the best way the sure way the sure way folks the sure way who out there wants a sure way a sure way of making a living today guaranteed all right that's enough jibber jabber i sure hope you enjoyed this evening's uh, this afternoon's session and as always thanks for watching i got a bitcoin street channel down there where i'm on the stock market and cryptocurrency markets doing lots of good stuff over there bitcoin street right down there put a link for you come check out my other channel subscribe over there doing some good stuff folks later